So we have a breaking news story. It would appear that Bungie is now laying off at least 17% of its workforce. This is an insane story and no small number. When announcing a restructuring effort, uh, Bungie was recently acquired by Sony. That acquisition was completed and Sony now has control. What's funny is Bungie a while back announced that they were not going to fire a bunch of people because of this acquisition. They guaranteed their employees that they would be able to keep their jobs despite this acquisition and restructuring effort being underway well it would appear that that was not the case so the ceo is lying to his employees but he's also doing other very terrible things which we're about to get into but you have to see this post from grum so that we can get into what kind of ubisoft apology bungie dished out to its fans as per grums here bungie is laying off 17 percent of its team they blame a slowdown in the game's market and stretching themselves too thin over too many projects like butter over too much bread as Bilbo says, they are scaling down to just Destiny and Marathon and spinning out a new studio with Sony that will be developing a sci-fi game. Oh yeah, baby, we're going to take a look at that sci-fi game too, but first you guys have to see the message from Bungie that was left for its fans and uh, I gotta say guys, it is a big thing to read, alright? There's a lot to go over and I don't think that I'm going to pick all of it apart, but I have some key things to show you guys here. So, as you can see in this apology, it says the new New path for Bungie. I call it an apology because it just reminds me of Ubisoft's apology to the Japanese people. It's a very ho-hum, half-baked. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's very sudden, and it has angered a lot of people, as you will soon see in a few moments. Shortly before the highlight in yellow, it says, This morning, I'm sharing with all of you some of the most difficult changes we've ever had to make as a studio due to rising costs of development and industry shifts, as well as enduring economic conditions. It has become clear that we need to make substantial changes to our cost structure and focus development efforts entirely on destiny and marathon that means beginning today 220 of our roles will be eliminated representing roughly 17 percent of our studio's workforce yeah so that is a lot of people to let go from bungie 17 percent hundreds of people on top of the other hundreds of people that are going to be distributed across other departments it says in red here these actions will affect every level of the company including most of our our executive and senior leader roles. I wonder why all of this is happening. It wouldn't happen to have anything to do with DEI, would it? Well, there are a lot of people saying different things. Some people say that it's because of the DEI efforts going kaput for Sony and for Bungie. Other people are saying that because of Bungie promoting a bunch of pride propaganda on their X post that that has affected the game sales. I think it could be for a lot of reasons. I think maybe Destiny 2's DLCs were never what they were cracked up to be and the final shape was a disappointment. I heard that it made a lot of money. I personally don't care because I can't stand Destiny 2 anymore. It sucked up way too much of way too many people's money. There are a lot of reasons to dislike Bungie, either for game development, overpricing all of their DLCs, catering to the woke here and there, and it looks like they're going to be continuing to do so, even doubling down in some ways, as you will see soon. It says here in this paragraph, for over five years, it has been our goal to ship games in three enduring global franchises. To realize this ambition, we set up several incubation projects, each seated with senior development leaders from our existing teams, but they say that they eventually realized that this model stretched our talent too thin too quickly. It also forced our studio support structures to scale to a larger level than we could realistically support given our two primary products in development, Destiny and Marathon. So what they're saying here is that they dedicated way too many resources to projects that they could not manage at the same time without going over their cost budgets. So because of that, they ended up going in the red as you can see in the highlighted red here, we were overly ambitious, okay? They admit it, we were overly ambitious. We really thought that we could do all of these things at once. We bit off more than we could chew. They said our financial safety margins were subsequently exceeded and we began running in the red. Well, I think as the days go by and we find out more about the CEO who enacted this and the people who used to work at Bungie who no longer work there reveal more about what they know, we will have a little bit more insight into this. But first, we have to check up on this X post from Bungie because this was only one of two ways that this announcement was made to the public. It was by that post you saw on the Bungie website and this X post right here. Funny enough, this was the wake up call for a lot of employees who had no idea that they were being fired today. As it says right here on the Bungie post, this morning we shared an important update with the Bungie team on the difficult decision to eliminate 220 roles at Bungie. You can read the full statement below. It links you to that statement that I just read to you and a 
lot of people, from what I'm hearing, saw this and realized that they were being fired. There are some people who didn't even know that they were getting laid off until they read this post to which they went to that other post on Bungie. But this is just one layer that I'm showing you guys. There are actually a multitude of layers that expose a much darker side of Bungie's CEO and the workforce therein that were affected by his decision today. And we are going to go over some of those things in just a second. As you can see from Alexandra Aiolina, this is a response to Grums. It says, Sony's Bungie is shrinking from 1,300 people to 850. That is such a huge amount of people. That's insane. 220 laid off, 155 moving to Sony, and 75 to a new studio. I assume that new studio that those 75 people are going to is the studio that is making this abomination of a game from what it appears. We're going to be seeing that too right after we take a look at the CEO himself. Pete Parsons, dad. Yeah, okay. CEO at Bungie and Bungie Love. BGCB, Arc Strider Main, Be Brave, Be Kind. F Racism and Social Injustice. Well, that is quite the rap sheet that you have there, Mr. Pete Parsons. I find it especially interesting that you are an advocate for being kind, considering the fact that you have fired so many people today without even notifying them beforehand. No severance packages, no money to keep them going until they find their next job. But at least you sounded really apologetic in your letter. And from the looks of things, you may have made a lot of money. But first, there is a post from Learning the Law who says, Bungie CEO, the communist LGBT symbols, the audacity of promoting be kind while firing 25% of the workforce catering to the same types of people who will ultimately eat you alive. This is what happens when you prioritize sending a message over quality. It's beautiful to watch. I did mention that there have been plenty of moments where Bungie has screwed up. They have catered to the woke. They post pride support this pride support that all over their X page and they promote all sorts of DEI and ESG concepts. And this guy was pushing it big time. You can see it on his banner right there behind his photo, the rainbow bungee logo. Amazing. He's such a taller and human being. He wants everybody to be kind to one another. And yet look at the things that he is doing. And yet there is so much more that he is doing that I have not yet mentioned. And we'll get to that after taking a look at some of the people who have just realized they've been fired today. As you can see from Grums, he posted a screenshot saying some Bungie staff are only finding out about their layoff via X, likely remote staff. So you got this guy saying, this is how I found out I'm laid off. And it's from that X post. So how in the world were they getting this stuff out to people? Were they just emailing them and hoping that everybody would see this? And if they did do that, did they really think that that was a good idea? Because a lot of people didn't get this email apparently, or they didn't see it in time before they saw on X and on Bungie.net that they were getting axed. So yeah, some of these people might have been remote staff. That is probably true, but there are other people who have been fired that are not so happy about this. Here is an ex-employee, as per NIB, of Bungie who was laid off, calls on Bungie CEO Pete Parsons to step down. Very disgruntled employee who also says he is a liar and a thief and claims this isn't on Sony but Bungie leadership. Well, personally, I think that Sony and Bungie both have a lot of problems to deal with, but I suppose that not all the blame can be put on Sony, although I'm sure the acquisition of Bungie probably contributed to it in some way, I have no doubt. Pete has also supposedly bought a whopping 24 vehicles from a single auction site since the acquisition closed in July 2022, totaling $2,409,550 in costs, presumably part funded by what Liana refers to as the giant Sony payout. So this guy, after the acquisition closed in 2022, he got a huge payout. Um, from what I'm hearing, it was in the millions, but from what I'm seeing here, this employee had a lot to say. Step down, Pete. And this is from Liana Rupert. And she goes on to say, you are a liar, a thief, and so many things we can't discuss publicly. I wonder why. I hope this person has receipts so that we can see more of this. But this is turning into a gigantic dumpster fire. Let me tell you. Step down and without the giant Sony payout. This isn't on Sony. This is squarely on the failure of leadership. Plain and simple. Well, I do believe that this whole decision, this entire situation, situation with a bunch of people being fired unknowingly is indeed a disaster of sorts. Now we have other stuff to show you guys. There's actually a, a video here showing the cars that this guy bought from a single auction site. So he's just like, I just want all these cars, one for each day of the month, I guess. I don't care. You know, I just made a crap ton of money. Oh, you guys got fired. Oh, that sucks. Well, hey, good luck at your next job. But hey, I got to go driving. got to go see a sunset. <laughs> he's driving his motorcycle and whatever the heck that thing is. Yeah. So he, he bought a bunch of, I don't <laughs> Some of these cars, I couldn't even bear buying. I, I couldn't even imagine just spending money
money on that many cars. You know, I'm one of those minimalist type people that is completely fine with one car for the rest of my life, no matter how much money I make. And I feel like that's how it should be across the board. But some people just really love buying cars, I guess, especially the CEO of Bungie, who has left a bunch of people stranded looking for work while he is just lavishing in all of these amazing vehicles he bought. But what more can we learn about this acquisition and some of the money that this guy has made? Because he took 2.5 million of whatever money he got and he just bought a bunch of vehicles. And what did he do after he bought those vehicles? He invited some of his employees to see his new cars two days before he laid them off. I don't even understand what I just read. <laughs> This is crazy, dude. It says right here from Sam, coward, you did this. You chose this. I'm already listed as do not work with and I don't care anymore. You lied to my face, straight to it. You also invited me to come see your new cars two days before you laid me off. Two effing days. Leave now. <laughs> I can't believe that he had the audacity to do something that crazy, if that is indeed true. But what kind of CEO goes out, buys a bunch of vehicles, knowing that he's about to fire a bunch of people two days before he fires them he's like hey you guys want to come see my amazing vehicles he probably let a couple of them get inside his cars too it's just like oh listen to that room room it's amazing isn't it and they're like yeah this is cool you're the greatest ceo ever two days later boom done they're all gone i would be upset too i'd be furious like what the heck is this why am i suddenly on the street in a cardboard box looking for work i was just sitting inside of this chevy a minute ago yeah these people are not thrilled and it really is funny because while this is very sad. There are a lot of things about these employees that we don't know much about. They were a part of Bungie for a long time, and if you know what Bungie's been up to, you will know that they have been pushing that message for quite a while. It says from Grums here, the accuser of Bungie CEO may not be the most stable person to believe. Given how Bungie CEO was such a huge virtue signaler, they deserve each other. You get what you hire for. Well, they may not be the most stable person to believe, but there is proof out there that this guy went out and bought a bunch of vehicles. It wouldn't be surprising surprising if he did in fact invite some of these people to see his vehicles. I won't say it's 100% confirmed, but we could get confirmation of that soon. Only time will tell, but here are some of the things that this person said. So when a queer person introduces themselves on a queer panel about trans and gender non-conforming people and how to be more inclusive and the first thing you talk about is how much you're an HP lover, I'm getting a refund. I assume this person is talking about Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy, but I could be wrong. They could be talking about something completely different. The point is the queer stuff, the gender non-conforming stuff, the inclusivity, the equity, the diversity. I'm, I'm just seeing it everywhere. This person is clearly an ex-Bungie employee. It appears that they were advocating for the same things that their CEO was advocating for. But there were probably a lot of people who got fired that have nothing to do with any of this ideology pushing nonsense. They were probably just normal people. It's impossible to say that all 220 people who were fired were woke LGBT activists, okay? But it is interesting nonetheless. But I've got a few more things to show you guys. You can have a little bit more context into what's been going on behind the scenes at Bungie. This is from Learning the Law, screenshotting Robert Brooks. Back when I joined Bungie, I always felt Saint-14 and Osiris, these are two Destiny characters, were romantically involved because as a queer man, their romance made sense to me. Of course it did. So I learned my interpretation was in fact correct when I became a narrative designer for the company and I was overjoyed. Yes. Well, listen here. I sure hope that it was worth it because it looks as if things are not going too well over at Bungie, and it may be because of this DEI Sweet Baby Inc. nonsense that so many companies are beginning to advocate for, and I know that Sony is working overtime to get this message out there by front-paging a bunch of Sweet Baby Inc. content for everybody to see, but I promise you that even though these people say it with their own mouths that they are working at these companies and changing the very stories of these games that we used to enjoy from from within, Bungie and the people that own them will tell you that that's not true and none of this is happening. As you can see from this quote here, Bungie's downfall has nothing to do with being woke. The developers are fine. The real issue lies with the executive branch. But as you can see, these people admit it. They admit it themselves in public for all to see with their own eyes. Which brings us to this recent post. I'm not sure if this is 100% confirmed yet, but in this post from MBG, PlayStation CEO Herman Holst is reportedly the head of Bungie now and if you're looking for 100% confirmation I don't completely have it but if you don't know 
know who MBG is. It says in the description, I run a PlayStation centric YouTube channel and that is 67,000 followers. I'm sure that he's not posting incorrect information. Sony legit killed Bungie. Marathon about to look good, but play basic like kill zone. And another comment says, you think it's possible for Sony to turn around and make Marathon exclusive now? <laughs> Well, first they need to make the game good. Then we can talk about which console it's going to be on. But let's move on to another funny post by Endymion in response to that PlayStation post. Herman Holst has been making some really dumb decisions over there at Sony PlayStation. The guy has seen mass layoffs at Bungie since his position, not to mention giving the okay to fund Concord, but also canceled the Days Gone sequel. That is unforgivable. How can you not give us a Days Gone sequel? That's almost as bad as a Bloodborne remake not happening. All right, it's horrible. But this guy greenlit Concord? Oh no. Well, now he's in charge of Bungie, apparently. If that's true, then wow, that's another bad decision under Sony's belt, among the other bad decisions that they've made of late. But Endymion finishes with really hope he steps down in the near future. He hasn't been good for the brand, in my opinion. So the CEO is firing a bunch of people, spending millions on cars, showing those cars to the employees that he's about to fire two days later. He gets this huge payout from Sony that he gets to enjoy while he watches laughing maniacally as his former employees hundreds of them scatter across the states for a new job because he just axed a bunch of them made millions bought a bunch of cars and said see ya and now i'm guessing the new head of bungie is this dude but if that's true then i feel like we're going to be learning some more things about the ceo but apparently his employees do not like him there are quite a few of them who do not understand why this is happening so suddenly but it's fair to assume that bungie is headed in a very unfortunate direction because the remaining people that were moved to another studio the 75 people that were mentioned prior are going to a brand new studio as you can see from Kami here these, there are a lot of expos that I'm going over today this could be our first look at the new PlayStation Studios game that's being split off from Bungie according to a 2023 job posting it's a team-based action game inspired by several genres in a brand new science fantasy universe that sounds like a lot of fun right it draws inspiration from fighting games platformers, MOBAs, life sims, and frog type games. I, what do they mean by frog type games? Like Frogger? It's like the only frog game I've ever played is Frogger. Wrapped up in a lighthearted comedic world. I, I'm, that just can, that kind of makes me mad. I don't understand that. <laughs> What do they mean by that? The team is designing for depth, mastery, and Bungie's signature action feel, as well as a friendly, inclusive community. Oh, well, that just sounds so exciting that you're pushing the message in yet another studio that's basically a spin-off of Bungie. Let's take a look at the photo that is going to be the precursor to this game. Oh, man, as you can see here, this Play-Doh knockoff, this cat down here who does not look as cool as my cat, is under a very DEI-looking character. There is a lot going on here, I gotta say, guys. Take one look at this. Does this look like a Bungie game to you or even something that a spin-off of Bungie would make? You have to understand that Sony is hell-bent on getting this message across. They are making moves in their company, in their structure, and across all of these departments, including Bungie, to make this happen. There is a reason that so many people got fired, laid off, and moved around. These acquisitions that are being made are because of a very tough economy and because game sales are just not doing well for a lot of publishers out there. They're also getting constant pushback from people who don't want a bunch of woke DEI nonsense in their video games. They're dealing with that too, and they've also been suffering for it in one way or another. So what do we do? Do we swear off Sony for good? A lot of people have. I know a few people myself who have sworn off Sony for good. I personally swore off Destiny individually for a long time. I have not played that game in years because I got so sick of spending money on DLC that didn't even give me any joy whatsoever just made me frustrated in their raids with a bunch of people who didn't know what they were doing all the time but just take a look look at this diverse equitous and inclusive looking image this is the game that they are developing and it looks like it's going to be so much fun i cannot wait to see where this game is headed playstation and bungie great job laying off a bunch of people making the whole world mad again and showing everybody just how incompetent you guys are and something tells me that this is just the beginning indeed as bungie says we are just getting started i have a feeling that this is actually going to be quite an interesting news week so stay tuned keep your ear to the 
the ground, stay vigilant. And that is all I've got for you guys in this video today. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you haven't had the chance to like it and share it with your friends, that would be awesome. And hey, if you're feeling ultra spicy, consider subscribing to my channel so that you're always up to date on what kind of thing I've got going on. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Later. Meow, meow.